part with vapor, uh, the, the, the uh, heat conduction is much, much lower. So a huge temperature difference can in such situations uh, occur. So we will look at first at such problems where we have a piece of pipeline. This is a straight pipe of a given diameter at the mean diameter dm uh, as the mean diameter of the pipe. So from the center of the uh, wall thickness to the other center of the wall thickness. So this is the mean diameter of the of the pipe. The wall thickness is uh, here given by T. Uh, we have here the coordinate system. So X is the uh, axis of the uh, of the pipe. Y is the vertical directions. But we'll uh, uh, also introduce here uh, angle phi measured from the vertical uh, line. So the ver vertical axis so, uh, from uh, Y axis. And it will show us an angle angular location on the pipe. Uh, you can also see here uh, phi zero, a quantity phi zero, angle phi zero, which shows us the angle to what level the uh, uh, liquid is, to uh, what level the liquid is present in the in the pipe. <laughs> we can also uh, so the nominal diameter of the pipe, as you see here is a uh, external diameter minus the wall thickness or the internal diameter uh, plus the thickness. Uh, the liquid field parameter uh, zeta, zeta is uh, uh, showing us how much of the liquid is there. So as you can uh, imagine, it varies from zero, where there is no liquid, up to one, where there is a full of liquid. Uh, so the, the amount of water, so the height of the, uh, of the liquid inside, is of course liquid field diameter times dm <clears throat> and it can be also expressed in terms of the angle as half of dm one plus cosinus of phi zero so we can express it at uh, the level of uh, of liquid both with the angle measured from uh, from the vertical axis or with the uh, liquid fill parameter. It's exactly the same. So there are two possible approaches available and we'll use uh, both of them. Of course, it depends on uh, what is easier to use or what information we have. We can use both those uh, uh, approaches. So the angle, the, 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 the fill parameter is connected with the uh, uh, with the angle half of one plus cosinus phi uh, zero. And of course, this liquid field parameter is dimensionless. That's quite obvious, I think. Okay. Uh, and on the other hand, phi zero, the field angle, let's say, is arcus cosinus to zeta minus one. For those, uh, for some of you, uh, especially in uh, English or American books, uh, arc, arcus cosinus is written as a cosinus to the power minus one. So this is exactly the same. Okay, uh, if we now look at the equation uh, of heat conduction or the equilibrium of heat conduction in the uh, in the pipe wall will of course based on the uh, on the heat transfer and temperature gradient so this is the connection between uh, 
uh, rate of uh, heat transfer uh, and the uh, temperature distribution as you as we discussed it in the, our first lecture and of course you know it well uh, from your uh, uh, heat transfer uh, course uh, we'll look at a very small piece of material of angle d phi of course the angle is very small uh, here it is not uh, that's small because we have to see something uh, when we uh, try to uh, build uh, some mathematical formulas, but uh, in general, mathematically, it is very, very, very uh, small, uh, infinitesimally small angle. And we have here, of course, due to the temperature distribution, we have, uh, let's say, a piece, uh, some amount of uh, heat entering our uh, slice of interest, uh, something is uh, going out, and there is, uh, of course, due to the heat um, uh, heat transfer, heat transition, and we have also a Q from ambient, so the heat transfer uh, from uh, the ambient uh, of the uh, of the pipe. Uh, the, if we treat the lambda, so which means the uh, coefficient of uh, thermal conductivity is treated as constant, and the temperature of the liquid is T0, and we assume that due to high thermal conductivity, or much higher than in the vapor part, uh the pipe which is in the contact with liquid is has approximately the same temperature as the liquid temperature so we can say that the bottom part which is filled with liquid has the same temperature uh, as the liquid so if we will uh, write down the conservation of energy principle for steady state conditions to the differential pipe wall element here this shown it will look like this more or less or exactly that one uh, where we have of course the uh, the heat entering uh, and leaving the uh, the piece of material we have the uh, uh, areas so we have the the uh, the area uh, through which the heat is transferred both from the exterior so and the external part of the uh, uh, of the uh, element and of course the cross-sectional part here uh, along the uh, cross-section. Uh, of course it is uh, it is connected with the uh, diameter the mean diameter, wall thickness, uh, and of course the length of the in the x direction. Uh, here we have also, of course, which is uh, the key issue here, um, discussing or the, the key parameter <clears throat> determining the heat uh, distribution, the temperature distribution, and the heat transfer. Here is the um, thermal conductivity. Uh, so if we are uh, resolve this equation we'll get uh, the square root of uh, the, the second derivative of temperature over d phi so the uh, coordinate uh, the circumferential uh, coordinate the angular com uh, component uh, plus qa so this is the ambient uh, heat transferred uh, into the uh, pi or out of the pipe is depending on the direction so depending this heat can be positive or negative uh, and uh, such a factor so let's say geometry material factor so dm plus t times dm uh, divided by four lambda t and we'll introduce here such a parameter theta q which is half of this part here. So you see it's a QA uh, dm plus t dm divided by 8 lambda t. So that will have, if you look 
carefully, it will have a unit of temperature. So it will show us to, to some extent, uh, let's say the temperature difference between the, let's say, cold, uh, the, the, the liquid part and the, uh, and the uh, upper part, the vapor part of the, um, uh, of the pipe. Okay, so this equation, this is of course the Fourier equation, so the heat uh, conduction equation, and if we will uh, rewrite it with the Q, and also assume that the increasing temperature, the changing temperature uh, in the pipe is T at given location, so it is uh, dependent on where we are on the pipe, divided by T0, T0 is the uh, temperature of the pipe, uh, of the uh, of this of the pipe, uh, uh, which is in the co in contact with liquid, or this is al also the uh, liquid uh, temperature. So the equation can be written uh, in such a form: the second derivative of, let's say, delta T. So this is the excess of temperature, let's say, or difference of uh, temperature between the liquid and uh, um, uh, and the solid part above the uh, above the liquid, uh, with respect to uh, uh, the phi, and plus two, let's say this parameter which shows us the temperature, so two theta q. And now we can what we can do, we can solve resolve this equation. So first integration, we have the first derivative. Uh, of uh, temperature uh, difference, uh, it's 2q phi, since uh, since in the uh, in theta theta does not depend as you look here once again. Uh, theta does not depend on q, uh, so it's a constant, a constant quantity here. So 2q uh, phi. And this is equal to C1. This is the, the first uh, first integration uh, constant. And we can say that for phi equals zero, so where we are at the very top of the pipe, so at the cross section with the cross with y axis. So if we are here, the distribution of temperature is symmetric. There is no reason that the temperature distribution was not symmetric because let's say it is if this is very hot uh, heat is transferred uh, both ways here upward and here these two heat fluxes meet so that we can say that there is no heat transfer there uh, so there is no temperature difference in such a case, we uh, so that the, the 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 derivative, the first derivative of temperature is zero. So, which means that the C one, so the first uh, coefficient of uh, the the constant of integration would be zero. Now we uh, integrate it for the second time. So we have already the delta t plus. Uh, theta q phi squared equals to c2. Uh, at the liquid level, so for phi equal phi zero, so we are the boundary between the vapor part and the liquid part, uh, we say that temperature is equal to T0. So that, that was our assumption that due to very high uh, thermal conductivity of, of fluid, uh, of liquid comparing to um, conductivity of gases part or the vapor part. So we can uh, approximately say that the temperature there is uh, equal to uh, liquid temperature, so T equals to T0. So if we introduce it there, we will get that uh, C2, so the second uh, constant of integration is 
uh, theta q times phi zero squared. Okay. So now we can say that the temperature temperature uh, difference between the uh, with respect to the uh, to the level uh, of liquid temperature. So let's say excess temperature above the liquid one or decrease depending on the on the liquid temperature exactly and the heat transfer from outside from exterior uh, will have that in the part of the pipe above the level of liquid so the vapor part we have the temperature distribution uh determined uh as theta zero, uh, theta q, uh, multiplied by phi zero squared, this is the angle where uh, the uh, uh, liquid is, minus, let's say, the angular coordinate, theta squared. And for the area where we are below the level of uh, liquid, the temperature difference is zero. Uh, the maximum temperature difference, which is quite obvious, it's at the very top. Uh, so temperature difference between the wall temperature and uh, uh, liquid temperature is uh, at the top of the pipe uh, and it would be if we introduce here the data it would be uh, so for phi equal to zero it will be uh, theta q phi zero squared and this is of course if we introduce the data uh, the expression for theta q this is the uh, the magnitude so theta times q zero squared. So it depends. Uh, the temperature difference will depend, of course, how much of the liquid is there. And of course, it will depend strongly on lambda, so thermal conductivity. It will depend on the wall thickness and it will depend on the uh, on the diameter of the uh, so this is proportional to diameter, as you see, it's a d squared even uh, in the uh, numerator. It will depend on the amount of heat uh, released uh, into environment or uh, taken from the environment and from the surroundings. And of course, but this is not uh, obvious. We, uh, here we have T and we have also in uh, uh, denominator. Uh, but of course, uh, the maximum um, here the influence is uh, is bigger. Of course, this is quite obvious that uh, the bigger the pipe. Uh, the temperature difference will be uh, will be bigger. Okay, so this is the temperature distribution, and this results in uh, let's say uh, stresses in the pipe. Uh, and uh, the formulas were already discussed uh, in case of bending that we discussed last time. Uh, so we have here a three pieces, let's say of uh, free components, free terms, uh, which uh, are in the formula for stress in such an object. We assume here that there is no external loading, nothing from exterior, nothing. We have only a temperature difference. So no pressure, uh, no uh, axial loading, 
no, not such an influence. Uh, you can uh, recall from previous lecture that if there is an axial force, you have to to this FT at the mechanical force, add to the mechanical moment. You have to uh, to the thermal moment. You have to add mechanical moment. So that would be the difference if there is any um, any external mechanical loading. But this is not uh, the case in this uh, situation. Uh, so we'll now consider uh, a case uh, where we have a pipe of length L, which is simply supported at each end. And as I told, no external mechanical, lo mechanical loading will be uh, applied there. Uh, you can also recall from last lecture that this FT, this parameter FT, we called it thermal force and it was expressed in such a way. Alpha times E, so that expansion coefficient, coefficient, linear thermal expansion coefficients times Young's modulus and integral of temperature over dA. Uh, since we have the same situation on both sides, there is a two component introduced. So this is the symmetry of the area on both sides. And delta T is expressed as we have discussed already, uh, uh, Q, uh, theta Q, and here we have the phi uh, zero uh, squared minus phi squared multiplied by half of dm t d phi. Uh, and we do the integration in the vapor area. So from the very top, where the angular coordinate is zero and we follow up to the uh, phi zero so the angle where we encountered the uh, the liquid part in liquid as we said on the previous slide delta t is zero so this is the force of course generated due to a different uh, extension or compression of different parts in material due to, of course, a different uh, temperature. So this is the force generated in the uh, in the material. Uh, if we do this integration, so the, the uh, integral uh, um, uh, variable is phi, so we integrate over uh, over phi. Uh, after integration, we'll get alpha e, the parameter, theta q, dm dt, uh, dm t, so uh, material and, uh, and uh, dimensions of the object. Here we have, after the integration, we have uh, phi 0 squared phi minus one third phi to the third power within the boundaries from 0 to phi zero. So if we introduce the boundaries here, the result for the force is two-thirds alpha e theta d, so diameter, thickness, and phi zero to the third power. So we can see that the uh, thermal force will depend uh, with, of course, material parameters. This is quite obvious. Here in this theta, uh, there is the ambient heat uh, flux hidden. So, how much we exchange with the environment, this is also important. If nothing is uh, uh, exchanged, that means that we have the uh, isothermal conditions, adiabatic conditions, so in adiabatic conditions, so if the Q would be zero, we have theta equal to zero and there is no thermal force. So we would have uh, the situation with uniform temperature distribution in the, in the entire 
uh, pipe. So there will be no, no force. And you see that the strongest influence here is on the level how much liquid is in the pipe. It's phi to the third power. Of course, phi, the angles here have to be uh, taken in radians, never in any uh, in any formulas. Uh, there is no uh, no uh, a a angles in, uh, in uh, uh, degrees unless there is a sinus or cosinus of trigonometric functions. But if there is an angle alone, it is always uh, expressed in uh, radians. <laughs> so this first term here in the stress parameter in the uh, in the stress. Uh, a formula f over t, uh, f t over a, as of course we divided by uh, by mm, cross sectional area, and this cross sectional area is pi dm t, so the cross sectional area of the wall. Uh, pi dm t. So if we divide it uh, by such a factor, we'll obtain. Uh, the final formula, it is also here uh, expanded, the Q, uh, theta Q is expanded, so we have here seen the uh, external uh, heat flux from the ambient conditions. So, of course, it will again depend on the amount of heat exchanged, level of water, of course, the dimensions of the object, the pipe, and the material of, war, of which it is uh, made. Uh, you can see that uh, the lower lambda, so material conducts heat poorly, quite huge uh, factor resulting from the force can occur. So this is due to the case that a uh, big uh, thermal gradient occur in the material. That's why the force can be quite big. OK, now let's move to the second term where the moment is. As we also may uh, recall uh, from pre uh, previous lecture, and the difference only from uh, between the force and the moment is that we have here y additionally, so the distance from the center, from the centroid. Uh, so if we put all the data in and the expression for y as it was on the first slide, half of dm cosinus of phi, the remaining part is known from the uh, force integral, so this is the uh, delta t, and this is the part uh, connected with y. So this is the location uh, uh, with respect to the center of the pipe, the centroid of the pipe. Centroid uh, in the pipe is, of course, the center of the pipe is the same. And again, we uh, provide the integration uh, at the part where there is no uh, liquid. So from the top up to phi zero, and of course it's again symmetric on both sides. So if we take out from the integral the constant objects, the constant quantities, uh, these are here, half alpha e dm squared uh, t uh, theta q, and to have to integrate only this uh, two factors, cosinus theta times, uh, cosinus phi times uh, phi zero squared minus phi squared. And of course, with respect to uh, phi, uh, within the boundaries zero to phi zero. So, <coughs> the integral is here. So, the integrated part is here. And here we have the boundaries from zero to phi zero. So after integration and introducing the uh, uh, boundaries, the limits here from zero to phi zero, 
will obtain that mt so if the bending moment resulting from temperature distribution so non-symmetric temperature distribution uh, according to the horizontal axis so according to the neutral axis as you remember from uh, from beams uh, we can also say here that the upper part is let's say either uh, colder or hotter than the lower part so depending uh, what is the temperature of the uh, of the liquid and uh, what is the direction of uh, external uh, heat flux but that did that will be uh, unsymmetric the, the the temperature distribution will be unsymmetric and that will provide different extension or compression of, of uh, the upper and lower part of the beam uh, of the of the pipe and that will produce of course bending moments so bowing of the beam that will be the main uh, a factor uh, representing bowing of the beam, uh, uh, bowing of the pipe, uh, which is generally treated as a as a uh, as a beam uh, with uh, annular cross section. So uh, that's quite that the, the story is exactly the same as for for beam for of course particular cross section. So uh, the thermal moment depends similarly as force on of course material parameters dimensions of the of the object the, the q the theta and of course uh, the level of uh, a fluid or the the liquid in in the object uh, we have the factor m divided by m times uh, y divided by uh, uh, by i, so moment of inertia. And for let's say general case, the moment of inertia is one eighth pi dm squared plus t squared times dm plus, uh, times t. This is a general case. Of course, we can compact it or rewrite it in this form. Uh, if we have thin walled pipes, this is written why to show you that if we have thin walled pipe, we can uh simplify it only to the factor before the brackets because if t is small uh, comparing to d its influence is quite small let's say we have uh 100 uh, the diameter is let's say 100 millimeters and we have one millimeter uh thick Pipe. So wall thickness is uh, 100 times lower. So we have 100 squared. So it's one ten thousand. So one plus one ten thousand. It's almost one. So we can forget about uh, about this factor, the second factor in the brackets, uh, and we can simplify it with only the uh, thin wall. Uh, approach. Of course, if the pipe is a thick walled, so the ratio of T over D is bigger, we have to take it into account because uh, the higher the ratio, the bigger error we, uh, uh, we generate here. But if we take that we have, let's say, a thin walled pipe, uh, so this is the the moment. We can uh, combine it uh, with. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Once one more uh, explanation. Uh, we have introduced here the I. So I in this form is introduced here. We have here D uh, squared. 
we have T. So we have to to introduce I here. We have to divide it by eight, divided by uh, D, and by pi. So this is the the story. And we can express it also as a function of the field and uh, the the uh, liquid field factor, which is the which was mentioned at the very beginning at the first slide. So cosinus phi zero would be two zeta minus one, and sinus phi zero would be one minus cosinus. This is a typical mathematical uh, dependence, sinus squared plus cosinus squared equals one. So sinus uh, is uh, square root of one minus cosinus squared. And if we put it there, we'll get uh, that sinus phi zero can be uh, expressed as two square roots of zeta my, uh, times one minus zeta. And if so, we can express the moment in such a way. So instead of the angle, we can express it with the zeta factor, so the field, uh, liquid field parameter. This is exactly the same. The, the, the factor uh, before the bracket is the same. And instead of sinus phi zero minus phi zero cosinus phi zero, we have this part here. Okay, so now if we combine everything together in this formula, so we have Ft of A uh, expressed like that. We have Mt times Y over I. I will be cancelled, as you see. That's why it is introduced here. It will cancel out. <laughs> and minus this uh, uh, thermal elongation alpha E delta T. If everything is put there, we can get the result, can find a solution, the final solution. So the stress distribution in the uh, in the upper part of the uh, um, uh, of the pipe, so the, the the vapor part, let's call it like this, and in a moment the lower part. So uh, this is uh, show. Uh, in general, sigma would be this entire right-hand side factor, so all these factors times alpha e uh, theta uh, q. Uh, we can divide it, so this is the, as you, you may uh, see, uh, it has a unit of stress as well. So this was the expression uh, we discussed for, uh, let's say, uh, heated up bar with constant temperature rise, uh, uniform temperature rise, so alpha E uh, delta T. So this is exactly the same, let's say, the same meaning. Uh, and on the right-hand side, we should have, let's say, a constant factor, then dimensionless, uh, dimensionless factor, where we have only uh, the angles. So we can find out what is the distribution of stresses uh, at different locations of the mm, of the pipe. As you see, there are only phi zero, so the uh, level of uh, liquid, and, and uh, we can see how the stress changes uh, with the angle with phi, starting from the uh, very top location up to the phi zero location. So this is. Uh, valid in this area, so between the top part of the uh, of the uh, pipe and ending at the location where the liquid starts. The second portion of the pipe, which is exposed to the liquid only, so between phi zero and pi, so the very Low bottom, uh, the, bo the bottom part of the uh, of the pipe, we have here. It looks very very much the same. If you see, uh, 
there is only this part missing. Uh, the right hand side part is the same. Look, the, this factor is exactly the same. This factor is here. So we have here minus and minus. So this is exactly the same. So uh, the difference is only uh, as a difference between the square uh, of the angle, actual angle and the phi zero. Uh, the maximum stress will be for the connection between, let's say, the, uh, the, the vapor and the liquid part. You can find a maximum the amount the maximum uh, uh, stress, and this is if phi zero equals uh, if phi equals to phi zero, so they will cancel out, and we'll have uh, the maximum uh, the maximum stress. And this is of course uh, the stress observed here for uh, phi equal phi zero. This is the magnitude. Uh, uh, of uh, maximum stress, so the, the let's say relative stress. If we multiply the right hand side result, so th that will be a dimensional coefficient with alpha e uh, theta q, uh, we'll obtain actual uh, actual stress. Uh, or the same can be expressed uh, in terms of field level. So this is exactly the same story, uh, but if we uh, introduce here yeah, this. Uh, instead of phi zero, we, ins uh, we introduce here uh, zeta. So this is the uh, this is the uh, formula. Uh, it's slightly bigger uh, than in this case. Uh, this is the due to the re uh, relation between uh, the angle and the field level. But both are exactly the same. So if we will draw it on a figure. You will see that there's the relative, let's say, stress, and depending how much of the water is there, so you see that if phi zero would be small, we have a lot of water. So phi zero equals zero, we have full of water. Uh, phi zero equal to pi, so 180 degree, uh, we have zero liquid. So this are the distributions along the phi coordinate. So we start here. This is the location here. And we proceed along the pipe wall up to the 180 degrees. And the same, uh, the same story is on the left-hand side and on the part, uh, right-hand side. So this uh, distribution of stress is symmetrical okay i can show you uh, i've done such a uh wait uh, uh i can show you uh where is it where is it here here i have this formula introduced and let's say here we have this is zero, this is 180 degrees, so pi. Uh, there are two curves, uh, they intersect, so this is the location where uh, the liquid is. So this is the upper part, and then this is the lower part. Stress distribution, so the factor, actual the factor, so sigma divided by alpha. Uh, alpha uh, e uh, times theta d. But uh, if you look at this, uh, this is the situation. We have a lot a equals to phi. So this is the phi zero. So phi zero equals zero means that we have the only liquid. If there is only liquid, we have zero stress because temperature is everywhere the same is equal to the temperature of the liquid but if we will decrease the amount of liquid you see 
that this is stress in the upper part with vapor and here is stress in the part of the liquid. The liquid part has very small stresses, but we will lower down the level, lower down, lower, lower, and you see that the stress distribution changes. Uh, let's say this is okay, half of pi, so this is the half of the pipe is filled with water. We have 90 degrees, phi zero is 90 degrees. So you see the distribution at the upper part and the lower part. Okay, and lower water, lower water, lower water, lower. And you see if there is very little water, the stress goes up. Up, 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 and it goes up. And for zero, it's let's say more than 2.5 times the parameters of the of the stresses. If we look now at all the positions of the maximum stress, we can uh, observe This is the story here again. So this is uh, there are uh, these are the curves. So this is for forty five degrees distribution. This is for ninety degrees distribution, and this is the distribution for one hundred twelve uh, twenty uh, degrees. But uh, what I showed you, we could move and f get a full distribution for different uh, different levels of uh, 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 of the water. Okay. And oh, uh, I should have I forgot, and you didn't recall it to me i forgot to start recording there i uh, know i'm recording uh someone has started recording okay 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 that's fine i thought i made a mistake but this is okay uh okay Come back. Uh, so, so these are only free for free angles uh, shown distribution of stresses along the wall here. And you can also observe for a given angle there is an extremus maximum of stress. And again, if we will now uh, combine them together, uh, we will get a distribution of maximum stress. So what would be the maximum stress in a given pipe as a function of the field parameter? So zero field parameter means that there is very little liquid. So it was the same as I showed you uh, a minute before. Of course, it was reversed. Uh, big angle meant that we have very small, yes, big angle close to 180 meant uh, that we have very little liquid. Here for zeta, quantity or the magnitude close to zero means that we have very little, uh, very little uh, liquid. So for very little liquid, only a small fraction of uh, of the pipe uh, has different temperature, significantly different temperature than the other, and it will be uh, observed as high stresses occurred. So this factor is close to 1.6, 1.5, 1.6, and it then falls down, and there's a, let's say, local minimum at, at the field parameter 
0 0.12, I don't know, 12, 13. So if only 12% uh, of the pipe is filled, uh, we have, let's say, local minimum, then it goes up again. Uh, we have local maximum, it's slightly above uh, 0 0.8, this coefficient, and this is about uh, slightly less than half of the pipe. As you see, it's about 40, let's say 42 percent of the liquid. And then if there is more liquid, the stress falls down, and for full pipe, it is zero. So you can see how this is affected by the liquid, uh, combination of liquid and fluid uh, in, in such uh, pipelines. So this may be quite uh, important practical uh, thing. Okay, uh, if we look at the deflection of such a pipe, you know the uh, equation for deflection of beam. So this is a beam uh, whose, uh, let's say, susceptibility or flexibility is governed with the uh, I parameter. So the, the uh, moment of inertia. So uh, since we have no mechanical loading, so M is zero, we have only M, thermal moment divided by EI, so flexural rigidity. And this is constant because MT is constant along, uh, along the beam, along the pipe. So we have only distribution of temperature in a cross section, but along the length, that's still the same. Uh, we have uh, this equation is written as the origin of the coordinate system is in the center of the pipe span. So we have a beam on the length L, and this is just in the middle as the coordinate system. So uh, it spreads from minus half of L to half of L. So integration of this. Uh, equation of deflection. After first integration, we have the first derivative of y over x, and this is exactly theta x. So this is the uh, nothing else as the angle, the slope. So the angle of the uh, tangent line, and this is m t x divided by e x plus constant C, and the second uh, integration, we have Y, so particular to the flexion of the pipe, minus MTX squared over 2EI plus CX plus the second, uh, second uh, constant of integration. Of course, the constant of integration can be determined on the basis of uh, conditions, of boundary conditions, and we know that this is a simply supported uh, pipe, so it is simply supported at both ends, which means these ends do not deflect. So for x equal minus half of L, we have zero deflection, and the same for the right hand side end for x equal half of l we have also zero so if we put both of them into uh into the equation so from the first uh, uh if we introduce it then if x is zero 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 we know uh, this is a mistake of course it should be reversed and D is zero. No, it's reversed. D is zero, and C is MTL uh, squared over eight EI. I have to uh, 
C, D. Uh, am I right? Yes, that's that's true. That's true. Uh, I will have a D Earth. Yep, yep, yep. So C is non zero uh, value, D is a zero value uh, constant. So the distribution, the bowing of the pipe, will be governed with such a function as you see here. The thermal moment generated by the temperature difference times the length squared over 8 EI. And here we have 1 minus 2x over L squared. So you see that it should be a piece of parabola. So it would be parabolic uh, bowing of this pipe. So we can uh, draw it. Uh, so at the end you have 0. And inside you will have a bow uh, of this pipe. According to the in MT, there is uh, there are dimensions. There are there is the heat uh, accumulated or the heat uh, exchange with the ambient uh, conditions. So this is of course the the, the loading as hidden here in the thermal moment. And this is responsible for uh, the amount of bowing of this pipe. Uh, maximum deflection would be for y equal to zero, so in the very center of the span. And that will be mtl squared divided by ai0, as you see here, for x equal to zero, we have this factor zero, so we subtract nothing. This is only the, the factor. So mtl squared over 8ei. And if we expand the mt, we have here material parameter alpha. We have the theta, where is the temp, uh, where is the uh, amount of heat exchanged. We have L squared. Uh, we have the amount of liquid in the pipe. So you can calculate for a given case, you can calculate what would be the, uh, the bending of the, uh, the bowing of the, of the pipe, or the same can be also uh, uh, expressed by means of the liquid field parameter zeta. So it is exactly the same. So this factor is the same and this bracket is substituted with this bracket. But these two, uh, uh, these two uh, uh, formulations are equivalent. So they show exactly the same. If you draw it, you will get the, uh, uh, the, the bowing of this of uh, this material, of this uh, a pipe uh, under investigation. Okay, uh, let's make an example. Uh, we have a cryogenic tube, which is made of steel. Only we have the parameters of the steel. Uh, Young's model is 193 gigapascals. Uh, the expansion coefficient is 16 times 10 to the minus 6 power, 1 over k. Uh, the heat conductivity is 12.3 watt per uh, meter Kelvin. And the pipe uh, has external diameter of 219.1 millimeter and the wall thickness 2.8 millimeter. Uh, it is 12.5 millimeter long. And it is in half filled with liquid nitrogen of, uh, of temperature minus 195 degrees Celsius. 
The heat flow absorbed by the external surface of the pipe is 471.2 watt per square meter. Uh, we have to calculate the maximum stress in the pipe and its deflection if it is supported at the end. So this is the case we have discussed. So what do we know? We know that the, it's uh, uh, filled uh, in uh, in half with liquid nitrogen, so the zeta parameter is 0 0.5, or in other words, phi zero would be 90 degrees. So that's half of pi. This is the liquid level, the nitrogen level in the pipe. Uh, the mean diameter, we have external diameter and if we have wall thickness, so dm, so uh, the, the uh, nominal diameter of the pipe is 216.3. To perform the calculations, we need it, the let's say the the temperature, the factor which uh, we introduced at the very beginning, theta Q, which is the heat transfer exchanged with the surroundings. We have uh, parameters of the pipe, so dimensions of the pipe, and we have here uh, lambda, so the uh, heat conduction. All these quantities are provided, so Q is given, uh, dm we have calculated, T is given, and lambda is also given. So if we put all the data into the formula, we'll obtain a number 81.05 K. So this is 81. Uh, point five, zero point five k. Uh, now we know that the delta T zero is so the maximum temperature difference is Q uh, theta Q times phi zero squared. So this is phi zero squared is a half of pi. So 90 degrees, so which means that the maximum temperature difference is 200 K. 200 degrees. Uh, between the liquid and the upper part, the hottest part of the pipe. Okay, so now we can use the formulas for stresses as we had, and we introduced there for phi zero, we introduce half of pi. And all the data uh, are provided here. So we have this factor, so this ratio sigma max, uh, let's say to, let's say an average stress or something like this, uh, S08, to two five, so sigma max. If we put the data alpha e, uh, theta q was calculated. <coughs> so and this factor is zero eight two uh, two five. So this is the factor, and we multiply it with these three quantities. Means alpha, Young's modulus, and uh, the factor uh, theta. And this gives us two uh, two hundred and five point nine megapascal. So quite significant stress, as you see, uh, two hundred two hundred six uh, megapascal. Uh, if we take into account that this is a very low temperature, uh, the material can get brittle there. So this is this can be quite quite dangerous for, for the material itself. 
Okay, so this is the maximum stress. Uh, we also were to calculate the flexion. If it's supported at the ends, we know that the material is 12.5 meter long. So this is the length. Everything was changed into millimeters. So we have alpha here. We have the theta. We have length squared divided by the pi times uh, diameter, mean diameter, and uh, sinus phi zero minus phi zero cosinus phi zero, and it gives us 300, almost 300 millimeters. So we'll observe deflection of this pipe due to temperature difference only because we do not take into account any weight of this pipe. So there is no loading, external loading, no gravity, nothing. Only temperature difference between the upper part and the lower part will cause a deflection of almost 300 millimeters, so 30 centimeters. Of course, the pipe is quite long, it's 12.5 uh, it's, uh, meter, but the deflection due to uh, due to temperature difference only uh, results in 300 and the amount of 300 millimeters. Okay, uh, second example or, or on this basis we can let's say adjust some uh, working parameter or operation parameters if uh, uh, if we have some, let's say, uh, limits uh, for the material, for example. So suppose we want to reduce the thermal stresses level to 125 megapascal. So in the original case, we had uh, 206, and we have to limit the stress to 125 megapascal. One solution is to limit the heat flux absorb from the outside, so the QA, uh, by improving the insulation of the pipe. Okay. So we can calculate, let's say, the uh, average temperature rise of this parameter Q th theta. What should it be? Uh, theta Q, sorry. What should it be? to have stresses 125 megapascal. This is from here, yes? We use this formula. This is the formula. We know the result. We want to calculate this theta. Uh, for the same case, so 0825, uh, lambda, and this is the, oh, there is dot should be there, uh, there should be dot, that's multiplied here. Uh, it's the Young's modulus, 193 gigab. Pascals, so 193 times 10 to the third power megapascals. Here we have megapascals, here we have megapascals, so they, uh, they will cancel out. So for such a case, this factor theta q should be less than 50k. We had previously 81. So it should be significantly reduced to have stresses not bigger than 125. Uh, megapascals, uh, which means that uh, the main factor, as it is said, is the heat absorbed from the exterior. Excuse me for a moment. Uh, so QA, so the heat uh, uh, transfer from 
or accumulated from outside, absorbed from outside due to poor isolation was 400 something. Now uh, we would have to uh, really repair or improve the isolation uh, that the heat flux through this uh, through this uh, insulation should not be bigger than 286 uh, watts per squared meter. So you see that the better will be the insulation, the lower will be the heat transferred, and more isothermal will be the pipe. So the temperature difference within the pipe will be much lower, and that will result in much lower stresses. So this is the way we can cope with the problems and how we can solve them. Okay, this is the uh, the thing I have to tell you uh, 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 with respect to the bowing of pipes. Now we will be, let's say, more or less in the same uh, in the same range because we will discuss here now circular shells. Uh, a pipe is, let's say, a circular shell as well. Now we will focus uh, on the stresses which can occur in circular shells, as for example, pipes, uh, containers, uh, pressure vessels, uh, shafts, uh, annular shafts, full shafts, and so on. So we'll discuss uh, here a group of, uh, let's say, technical objects that are very common in industry. And I will show you uh, how to cope with the problems and what are the loadings uh, involved in such situations. So uh, let's assume uh, we have a shell, circular shell. So it can be built if you have, a, let's say, a rectangle or any other plane figure and you revolve it about an axis. You will obtain an ax axis symmetric uh, plane or circular. Uh, here we have uh, this rectangle uh, uh, mm, revolved about an axis and we will obtain a circular shell. So uh, a curved structure. Uh, first, we'll combine here uh, two uh, kinds of stresses, mechanical stresses, which usually uh, can come from revolutions, from rotations, and from temperature distribution. Uh, and also, there, there will be uh, one more group, uh, which uh, instead of uh, inertial loading, which means the revolutions, will be subjected to pressure. So we'll try to combine these loadings and observe how particular components influence uh, the objects and what are uh, the stresses in these objects. Uh, so let's look at a piece of material, a fraction of this, uh, let's say, shell. Uh, we assume that the shell has an inner diameter, uh, inner radius of A, will be no denoted by A, and the outer diameter, uh, outer radius will be B. We'll look at a very small fraction of the material, or a very small piece, uh, the angle is d phi, very, very small from the mathematical point of view, and we observe a uh, such a thin slice of the material. It is exposed generally to loadings which result from rotations, from revolutions, and this is the inertia loading, so the circumferential force. Uh, if we look at such a piece of material, uh, very, very uh, thin, uh, so at the height dr, 
very small. Uh, so very small piece of material. And this is uh, the piece of material is subjected to circumferential force, uh, which depends on the speed of rotation. So the, this is the angular velocity squared. This is the radius, so how far from the axis of rotation it is. What is the density of the material, so how heavy the material is. Uh, and of course the geometry information about the piece of material. So Z, Z, R, D, R, D, F, D, Phi. So this is the amount of the material. So in general, mass, uh, mass. Uh, so the, this is the volume. Z, R, D, R, D, Phi is the volume uh, times rho is the mass. So mass times uh, radius time, uh, times omega squared, so the uh, angular velocity. So how quickly it rotates, it will affect, of course, the stresses in the material. Uh, if we look at the sections at the bottom and the top of this piece, so there is a further, the material is further upward, there is a material below. So this section is exposed to stress sigma r, let's say, times z r d phi, so times the area means that this is the force which keeps it uh, integral. And there is the force which results from the upper part. So this is the force resulting from the lower part part, interaction between the lower part of the component, and this is the uh, force, slightly different force. So this is the slight difference. This is the same as here. And due to the different uh, radius, so we are at a slightly further from the axis of rotation, we will observe a slight difference in the let's say, circumferential force acting on this plane and this plane. In the circumferential direction, there is a force resulting from growing of the, uh, of the pipe if we will rotate it. If you take a piece a uh, dough for a pizza and you will try to rotate it very quickly. So if you uh, uh, observe pizza makers somewhere, so let's say experienced pizza makers, they will, they do rotate the dough on their finger. So it grows due to the circumferential force. So this is exactly the same story, but it, if it grows, uh, stress perpendicular uh, to the surface will occur. So it goes bigger, it gets bigger, so there must be a uh, force generated that prevents destruction of the object. So, so we have here a sigma phi, so sigma in the circumferential direction, uh, times that dr, so this is the area of this thing. If you write the equation of equilibrium for plane stresses, so a given section will take into account only stresses in the radial direction and in the tangent direction. There is no stress here observed in the axial direction, so only plane stress case. The equation will look like this, or less. This is a combination of this, uh, of this, um, so, um, Equ equation of equilibrium for uh, for this piece of material here observed. Uh, if we look at the elongations or deformation strains in the 
object epsilon so strain in the radial direction along the right radius it is of course a uh, combination between stresses stress and strain uh, are connected via Hooke's law so this is the Hooke's law written for stress and strain distribution uh, and epsilon r, uh, uh, epsilon r is 1 over e sigma so a radial stress is generated there minus nu sigma phi so circumferential tangent stresses times plus sigma uh, axial stresses if they are zero they are zero but general case is like that plus alpha t minus c zero so extension or uh, strain generated due to change in temperature this is for phi direction so change in the circumference and this is elongation in the z direction if we assume that epsilon z is zero so the 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 the, the, um, the shell is fixed at the ends so it has no possibility to extend it will generate force and in consequence stress in z direction which will be add uh, nu which is the, the poisson's ratio uh, sigma r plus sigma phi so the radial stress plus the circumferential tangent stress and minus alpha E and temperature rise, temperature difference. So temperature minus the, let's say zero stress temperature. So temperature rise. Uh, in such a case, epsilon R would be that much. So if we put sigma Z into the formula, uh, sorry, and epsilon phi into the formula so this can be expressed in such a way for case where we have fixed ends of the shell so this is the balance of stress and strain so hooks low general hooks low uh, generally uh, the strain in phi direction is zero because it's fully symmetric so there is no movement in, the, uh, uh, in this direction and this uh, tangential direction so epsilon phi is zero uh, so the equation for deformation for uh, deflection of this beam displacement written because the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the problem can be formulated as a stress problem, so a combination of forces or in consequence of stresses, or uh, in terms of deformation. It depends on what information we have about the system. So if we have the boundary condition, as you see in both cases, these are uh, uh, differential equations. So if you integrate it, you obtain uh, the uh, you obtain uh, constants, and uh, if you have boundary conditions based on what is not muted. Uh, if we have constants based on forces, we will use the uh, stress equation. If we have information on the boundary conditions based on uh, deformations, we will use the deformation equation. Sometimes we can have mixed information, so some, some about stresses, some about uh, uh, deformation, so we have to use both deformation so if you solve this equation 
I will not show you how to do it uh, because it's not that obvious. Uh, you can be expressed as a combination of material parameters, alpha, uh, temperature distribution, which is here an integral within the material, uh, and we have the geometry of the uh, of the object, so which means A. Uh, the integration constant C and uh, C1 and C2 are found on the boundary conditions, which will be discussed after the break because we have now time for break. Thank you, and we will see us in 15 minutes.
Okay, uh, we can uh, follow our uh, solution. So once more, we have an uh, equation for the uh, shell uh, deformation for the shell um, displacement, where U is displacement in the radial direction. Which depends on the U and depends on the um, on the Poisson's ratio. Uh, here we have the uh, rise in temperature. <clears throat> so the solution, uh, the the uh, integration after integration, uh, we got uh, the solution. Where here we have an integral of the temperature distribution, so we do not solve it now because it depends on the uh, temperature distribution in there uh, for a given case, uh, but uh, I had the integration after uh, with respect to the radius uh, was carried out, so from the second derivative without taint uh, displacement. So how far the, to what extent the R increases or decreases. This is the U. Uh, so increase or decrease. Uh, so displacement for the uh, radius. And this uh, factor is left in this uh, and this uh, in this form because it depends. Uh, the solution will depend on the temperature distribution, <coughs> uh, which is there. We will discuss the particular distribution so uh, it this integral will be then uh, solved so the boundary <coughs> conditions uh, are for um, internal diameter if there is no action from inside so no pressure uh, no force applied radial stress will be zero there for r equal to a so at the internal surface of the shell uh, the same story uh, will be for external uh, radius so external surface if there is also nothing applied uh, so sigma r will be zero for r equal to b. So at both surfaces, the internal and external stress, radial stress, the radial component of stress is zero. And uh, there is, uh, if the ends are free, so there is no force, uh, compressive force, so there is no uh, constraints which allow to uh, expand, elongate for the entire shell, epsilon z will be zero. And now this is the general uh, general case. Now we'll look at some specific cases which can be resolved. Uh, you see, it's quite. Uh, quite uh, complex yes here where we have uh, let's say uh, constant parameter easy geometry of the of the object it's quite easy to be solved this equation but if the geometry would be more complex uh, with varying uh, cross sections for example along the length that would be much much bigger so we can usually solve quite simple uh, geometries if we take for the first object, for the first particular case, a solid shaft. So a cylinder, solid cylinder, uh, and which is a very often used object in a machinery. So we have a transmission shafts uh, in all the machineries, rotational machinery usually. So uh, the radial stress is E times alpha 1 minus nu. So these are material parameters. Young's modulus 
uh, expansion coefficient and Poisson's ratio. <clears throat> 1 over b squared, b is the external radius. And there is a integral from 0 to b, so over the entire uh, uh, entire diameter, uh, entire radius. So from the center of the shaft to the external surface. So from zero to b of such a factor t times r. So increasing temperature times r minus one over r. So this is the r at which we calculated. So the 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 uh, the region for which we calculate stresses. So this is the variable. And we calculate the lower part of the of the shaft from zero, so from the center to the location we are looking at. Uh, this is the radial stress, and this is the uh, circumferential stress, so the the stress in the tangential direction. Uh, this is very much the same. The difference is only here. Here we have uh, minus. Here we have plus and additionally here is the also minus t applied uh, for the case where there is no axial displacement so if the object is free so the ends are free there is no z stress if it's constrained so epsilon z is zero so we have the case that this is uh, between two rigid walls, as we discuss it for the bars between two rigid walls. Sigma Z, so Z, the axial uh, stress is EI times nu, could be here, divided by one minus nu, and we have here two over uh, B squared, so the external uh, radius, and we integrate it over the entire height minus T. If the ends are free, sigma Z would be slightly different, depending on the temperature distribution across the uh, across the object in the radial direction. We have only temperature distribution in the radial direction. So this is a uh, T is a function of R. So that's why it is here integrated. This is the only case. So there is no change in temperature in the longwise direction, lengthwise direction, only in the radial direction. So it is completely symmetric. Uh, the elongation, so the change in the diameter, so u is the displacement, uh, uh, so increase in the radius exactly, as provided with this formula, uh, very much, uh, very similar, uh, where we have also the alpha, so expansion coefficient. Uh, we have the geometry, so the uh, external radius, it depends strongly on the external radius, and it will depend on the temperature distribution in the shaft, which is quite obvious. <clears throat> I will show you then the distributions, how does it look like uh, for particular cases. If the shaft was annular, so uh, we have a hole inside, so there's a drilled shaft, a drilled cylinder. So there is a uh, uh, internal diameter is A, lowercase a, and external diameter is B. So the formula for uh, stress components for radial and uh, uh, circumferential stresses, they are quite uh, the same. There are differences only here, plus minus, and here plus minus. 
and additionally minus t. These factors are very much the same. So it depends on the uh, difference between squares of external and external radius, and there is also a ratio of uh, a radii. Uh, and same story, if a z is zero, epsilon z is zero, so no axial displacement, so fixed ends, sigma z will be uh, expressed in this way, e alpha one minus nu, two nu divided by the uh, b squared minus a squared and integral from a to b, so over the entire radius, so from the internal surface to the external surface of tr dr minus t. Uh, the second case, if there are free ends, so no constraints at the ends, the uh, sigma z will be slightly different. There is no new here occurring. So no, the lateral uh, displacement effect is observed here. And on this basis also the u somehow change in a radius, so the displacement, radial displacement, uh, s uh, also uh, presented here. Uh, it looks similar to the previous one. Of course, the material parameters, exactly one material parameter in uh, displacement is observed, so which is the uh, one uh, elastic quantity, so a, a new, and one uh, uh, quantity, one parameter which uh, responsible for thermal deformations, so alpha uh, somewhere here also must be observed. And of course, uh, to what extent the object uh, will increase or decrease, so how its diameter changes depends strongly on the uh, temperature difference uh, across the material, so what is the temperature distribution uh, inside the <coughs> material. Again, <coughs> only in the radial direction uh, the temperature changes, nothing else. <coughs> so, at steady state uh, conditions, so the annular shaft at steady state conditions, well, not prove it now, it is a topic for uh, heat transfer course. The te temperature distribution for annular shot with steady state temperature distribution, where we have at the internal surface temperature T E T in at the external surface temperature T out. So across the material we have delta T. So T at any location is delta T times natural logarithm of external radius divided by actual radius where we are at a particular location divided by uh, a natural logarithm of uh, external radius divided by internal radius. And if we put the data in <coughs> here, in this formulas, we will obtain the radial stress E alpha delta T. So this is the gradient of temperature across the material. One, uh, two times one minus new logarithm natural regard external di uh, radius divided by internal radius. And here is the combination of the ready external, uh, internal, uh, and a variable where we want to calculate the stress. So as you see, uh, sigma r will depend on r. So it is a distribution of location. So how far we are from uh, from the center of the, uh, of the shaft. I will show you in a moment distributions uh, if you draw it for particular uh, data, how, 
how does it look like? Uh, the second component uh, of stress of the circumferential or the tangential component uh, is similar. Uh, the difference is we have here one minus this part is the same here we have plus. So two locations uh, of slight difference. As that for the worst case, uh, so for the blocked case would be that match. So very similar uh, uh, to but the shape is uh, very much the same for each case. Uh, the factor here before the bracket is in each case the same. So they only differ with the uh, with the brackets here. The <coughs> inside what is inside the brackets and uh, you. So the uh, uh, displacement, of course, with use of the of the distribution of temperature. So after integration and solution is presented in this form. And if you draw this result on a diagram, you will observe that this is a radial coordinate. So this is the R. Uh, here we start at A, so this is the internal diameter, uh, internal radius. This is the external radius. So what happens inside the material? Radial stress is zero at the ends. It grows up, reaches maximum, and goes. Uh, uh, to again to zero, uh, the maximum is cl quite close to the internal surface. Uh, of course, whether it's a negative or positive stress depends on the direction of the heat transfer. So, uh, uh, where is hotter, where is colder? So, what is the temperature difference in the uh, in the material? Same story with uh, sigma phi and sigma z. Sigma phi and sigma z are equal for A. This can be proven here. If you take that uh, R equal to A, you will get exactly the same, uh, the same story for these cases. <coughs> and they go up, they change uh, sign, so they cross zero line, zero stress line somewhere in the material, and they end up at another quantity, another value, which is non-zero, and they are connected together. So at the ends, at the internal and external surface, they have the same values. In between, they vary. What is important generally uh, phi stress and Z stress is bigger than the R stress, so than the radial stress. Uh, of course, again, if the uh, temperature difference was reversed, the stresses will also uh, will uh, will also be uh, reversed. So sigma r would go upward above the axis and uh, sigma z and sigma phi would start from the positive value and would end up at negative value. We can also uh, uh, already see here that the maximum stresses will be either on the internal surface or at the external surface, somewhere there. Maximum resulting from the uh, radial stress is not significant here. So it does not generate the, let's say, the critical value of stresses for this kind of object. 
So this is, uh, in each case, uh, it will look like this. Uh, yeah. For any annular shaft, only the values can be different, uh, but the shape of the distribution is exactly the same. If you look uh, for rotations here, so let's say there is no temperature difference, uh, and uh, of course for the combination of uh, two factors, so revolutions, rotations, and uh, and uh, heat transfer, so temperature distribution, we can use the uh, superposition principle. So analyze them separately, since we are within the Hooke's law, everything is linear. Uh, so we can uh, solve them separately, taking into account only uh, mechanical stress, take into account only thermal stress and add them up. Add particular components uh, to each other. So <clears throat> if you look now at the situation, what happens if the object of the shaft only really rotates, so if there was, there was no uh, temperature difference, uh, the uh, radial stress would look like this. Here we have the only loading as the omega. So the angular velocity. Uh, uh, and the angular velocity and omega, oh, it's omega is pi times number of revolutions per minute divided by 30. So you can recalculate if you have, uh, this is a revolution per minute. <coughs> so you can recalculate it into omega into uh, angular velocity. Uh, and of course, what we have here, we have a raw, so density of the material, which is quite important because uh, this is the, the key factor which plays a role, the main role in the uh, inertia forces. And of course, we have here uh, uh, Young's modulus. Uh, no, not Young's modulus. We have here the uh, Poisson's ratio and we have uh, dimensions of the objects. Of course, again, A and B are internal and external radius. Uh, sigma phi, quite similar differences again. Here is plus minus, and here is only uh, R squared, and here is additional such a factor, one plus two nu, divided by three minus two nu. And we'll in a moment, look uh, how they if, they, if we compare uh, these two uh, stresses, what, what is the result? And again, uh, in the Z direction, it depends on the ends, uh, on the condition at the end. So for fixed ends, so no possibility of extension in axial direction, we'll have sigma Z is nu times sigma R plus sigma phi. And for free ends, it's uh, expressed uh, uh, in such a form uh, where there is uh, explicitly shown the omega, rho omega. And of course, it is also here because it's hidden in sigma r and sigma phi. Uh, but in this case, it's easier to show it up in this uh, in this form. So it's quite easy to uh, represent it in this form. And if we look again at the solution, at the result obtained, <coughs> we have that uh, sigma r, similar as it was before, also 
not only for temperature distribution, but also for revolutions at internal radius, so at internal surface and external surface, sigma r is zero, unless there is something acting on the surface. So let's say we have a, a um, pressure connection between two objects. So then uh, the stress there will be equal to the stress generated by the bearing stress, so by the compression of two elements. Or we have, let's say, at the external surface, we have some material that is attached. Let's say we have blades of a, let's say, uh, of a turbine or uh, of a uh, fan, compressor, whatever. If there is something at the external port attached, the stress will be non-zero then. But if there is no extra interaction, uh, stress starts with zero, reaches, let's say, its maximum, which is not, again, the global maximum for the for all the uh, components and goes down to zero. Sigma phi starts with quite high value at the internal surface and falls down to non-zero value. It never crosses zero. Of course, these uh, stresses cannot be reversed because uh, the inertia force, force always acts uh, outside uh, the rotational axis, so there is no possibility to reverse it uh, to uh, negative quantities, uh, as it is possible in case of temperature difference. What we can see here, sigma phi is always above the sigma r. So it's always bigger at any location. We will see in a moment whether it is a general general feature or it is just a case here. And here we have sigma z and we have here two possibilities, two cases. One is for the free end and the other is for the fixed end. So this is the uh, fixed end and this is the free end. So we see uh, they vary very slightly. Uh, their magnitudes are also not the biggest, uh, even smaller than the uh, sigma r. And their, their variation at the cross sections are very, very small. So you can, for particular case, uh, calculate uh, that, or you can prove it here. If you subtract sigma phi minus sigma r, you will obtain always this is uh, this is additional factor here. So it's bigger. It will always be bigger than the sigma uh, sigma r. Okay, and one more topic. Uh, these are pressure vessels. Again, we are still within the same uh, with the same area of uh, of objects, but now instead of rotations, we can have a pressure exerted here. Someone, uh, someone is not muted. There are some bugs heard from outside. There must be a hot country. Okay. So uh, now we do not have uh, rotations. We have, do not have revolutions. So rather than we have pressure inside. So the story is very much the same. We have internal diameter, external diameter, uh, and uh, pressure is non-zero now. 
if we take into account this case that there, there is a pressure only, uh, stress will be like that. Sigma R, the radial stress uh, in the radial direction, is the magnitude of pressure times internal radius squared divided by the difference of the squared radii, radii and 1 minus b squared divided, so external radius divided by the, the radius where we calculate our stress. Uh, sigma phi, so the circumferential, so the tangential uh, stress in the material is very much the same. There is a plus instead of minus, we have plus. So we see again that it should be bigger, always should be bigger, because here we subtract something, here we always add something. And sigma z is independent of r. So in each section, wherever we are, is the same stress. You can observe here that if you introduce here external radius, so r equal to b, we have b over b, so 1 minus 1, 0. So stress at the external surface should be 0. At the internal surface, if you put here a squared, uh, you can substitute it with a this one could be a squared minus b squared divided by a squared. So a squared will, will cancel. b squared minus a squared will cancel. So that would be only minus 1 remain. So sigma r will be equal to minus p. So it will be equal to the pressure which is uh, which acts inside the material. And if you draw it again, on the internal surface, sigma r is equal to minus p, so the magnitude of p with a minus sign, and it goes, goes slightly asymptotically to zero. Well, asymptotically exactly because it reaches zero at the end. Uh, sigma phi has slightly bigger value at the internal surface, so it's slightly bigger, and goes down, and it ends above zero, so it reaches never zero, and there's the constant sigma z uh, uh, stress, which is very of very little importance. So this is the distribution, how it looks like in pressure vessel to this quantities. Uh, so to this distribution or to our rotating shaft, you can add the temperature distributions and you'll, you'll obtain the uh, total stress in such uh, materials. And the last topic we have to cover here is the rotating disks. Again, very often encountered objects in machinery, uh, especially power machinery, where we have to do with, we have to deal with uh, temperature differences. <coughs> so this is, let's say, a uh, a rotating wheel and a turbine, for example, steam turbine, gas turbine. Uh, quite similar stories can be in uh, compressors, so axial compressors. Uh, are, so uh, this is quite quite uh, common uh, object which has to be also taken into account. If of course the uh, distribution in temperature occurs. So in general, in cross section, uh, this object. Uh, yes, it has an internal hole usually, but sometimes we will also consider cases where there is no hole inside, so internal 
um, internal diameter. So this is the internal hub. Uh, it is a given height. Uh, the in general case the width can change. So this is a cross section of general uh, of general uh, uh, rotating uh, of general disk. So at one location it's width z at other location it's it is slightly different bigger or smaller so if we move where the r a little bit uh, there is uh, there could be a change uh, if we look uh, on fast so from the front and we observe such a thin slice of material so this is very very small uh, ring of height dr so infinitesimally small and the angle is also infinitesimally small you observe similar uh, stresses as it was in the uh, in case of the uh, rotating shells this is exactly uh, very much the same so i will not discuss it uh, for the second time uh, so we have of course the uh, the inertia loading and uh, stress is generated due to the inertia uh, loading in this case as well the only difference is that in previous case uh, the uh, there was no different width there is a short object let's say of different width uh, in case of shells they are usually uh, much bigger much higher uh, if you draw if you write down the equation of equilibrium uh, it will look like this. This is for only ro rotational effects here. And, uh, or it can be rewritten in such a form, where we have, uh, of course, uh, quite a big problem to solve it, uh, to resolve uh, at four stresses. Uh, of course, we have information about the operational conditions. So, uh, speed of rotation uh, material, but unfortunately we have here Z. We have here change in Z uh, uh, over the radius. And this is generally quite complex until this is a very, uh, let's say, uh, simple geometry. Uh, solution of the problem can be quite difficult and usually requires uh, requires more complex tools, uh, numerical analysis of software to uh, to solve such uh, problems. We can quite easily cope with uh, simple geometries, which are uh, geometries of constant width. But in a moment, let's look now at uh, deformations. So if the disk rotates, let's look at two sections one is at distance r from the rotational axis uh, the other is very close to it so it's by dr further dr means very very small so they are close to one another uh, if this rotates you can imagine as i told you with the pizza it will extend so the internal part uh, will grow a little bit. So this section moves now a little bit to the exterior outer. Uh, so it will move by U. So it was R and now is R plus U. Of course, this piece also grows. So uh, the black one moves now while the object rotates uh, to a further distance from the axis of rotation. Uh, it is R plus dr plus u plus du. So this piece grew, grew and also this piece grew. So that's why this is additional du here so if you combine them together you can find that the str 
train in the radial direction from this observation here can be written as du over dr. This is the very simple definition of strain, which was discussed on your basic course of strength of materials for a one-dimensional uh, stress case. So du over dr, which means to what extent the very thin ring of material between R and DR extended. So it was its distance before was DR and it now grew by DU. So this is a relative change in diameter. In the phi direction, since uh, let's say the respective uh, black and red lines are, are at different radii, so this is closer to the uh, center, this is a little bit uh, further, only a little bit, but you can easily see that the red is longer than the black, so it elongates as well. And the elongation of the strain in a lateral direction, in the uh, uh, tangential direction, uh, can be expressed as u over r. So u over r. Uh, from the Hooke's law, so this is once more which was discussed a couple of minutes before, dependence between stress and strain, so uh, as a Hooke's law, is here. So this is the uh, generally um, stress is generated by mechanical forces and strain generated by temperature difference. So we have just addition. So the method of, or the uh, principle of superposition. So we can separately analyze each factor, either stresses or uh, our temperature difference and add the effects. Okay. So if we express the same story on the, in the opposite directions, here we have epsilon as a function of sigma. Now we have sigma as a function of epsilon. And uh, equation, the same equation written for the displacements. Uh, you see that it's not very user friendly. It's again a second uh, order um, differential equation similar to this uh, we discussed for the shells. Uh, the problem is that we have here a derivative of z over r. So this is quite difficult because if the factor is quite complex, you have a function here, uh, the equation is very hard to be, uh, to be solved and usually requires quite uh, advanced approach. But we can solve cases where we have constant thickness, constant thickness, so z is equal to a given set value. That means that the derivative of z is zero. If so, that would cancel out, same here, and the equation will be much, much easier. So let's look at some particular cases. Let's say we have a solid disk with constant thickness. So this is our disk, this is the axis of rotation, so the diameter is of course 2 radii, so radius, external radius is b. The 
thickness is h. So z equals to h. If we take that this factor here on the right hand side is equal to a because it's constant, so to shorten a little bit this uh, the, the description, we take that a is minus one plus nu squared over e rho omega squared. So this is a factor responsible for the revolutions only. So the equation when taking a z equal to h, uh, which means that, that the uh, uh, derivative of z is zero. So the equation looks like this. du du uh, d to u uh, over dr squared plus one over r du over dr minus u over r squared equals two a r plus. So this is the inertia factor uh, resulting from revolutions and this is the thermal factor. And now we try to solve it. We can the same equation write uh, in this form. Uh, so take the, the derivation outside the brackets and integrate it for the first time. We obtain this result. So a is here, r squared over two plus one plus nu alpha t plus uh, constant of integration. We multiply it with r and provide the second uh, second integration, and we obtain from the second integration u times r, so what is here uh, below, uh, at the, uh, at the um, derivative, uh, derivative and on the right hand side we have a r to the fourth power over eight plus one plus uh, nu times alpha and integral of tr dr plus c1 uh, squared plus c2. So we have two constants of integration. Uh, before we can solve anything, we have to find this uh, this constant of integration, which is uh, which we'll discuss in a moment. And u as a function of r. So this is u times r, and this is u as a function of r. So if we cancel by r. We obtain only u, and this is uh, this is very similar here. A r to the third power of eight plus one plus nu times alpha uh, divided by r integral of the temperature distribution. And here, two factors uh, connected with the uh, constant of integration. So if we put the displacement solution into the stress equation, we will get uh, the formulas for stresses, of course, general, uh, since we have here the constants. These are slightly different constants because they are, here they were constant for displacement. Now they are constant for, uh, for stresses, but they will be found uh, in a moment. So the stress distribution uh, will be, of course, connected to the factor resulting from revolutions here yeah, and the factor resulting from uh, temperature difference or temperature change. If we look now at the boundary conditions that u is zero at r equals zero, so at the center, so the center does not move. So r is zero, u is zero. That means that both C2 and D2 are zeros. And for R equal to B, if there is no interaction from exterior, uh, sigma R is equal to zero, which 
leads to a solution that D1 would be 3 plus mu over 8 rho omega squared b squared minus such an integral. So this is the part connected with temperature distribution. So if we put the uh, data, the solutions for the constants into the into the formulas, we will obtain uh, the solutions. Uh, let's look now at separate uh, factors inside the solution. So the factor connected only with revolutions and the factor connected only with uh, thermal stresses. So if we take that T is zero, so there is no temperature rise or delta T is zero. So we are still at the same temperature. There is no temperature difference uh, within the material. Uh, the only factor that affects stresses is uh, rotational speed. So revolutions which are in omega. So sigma R and sigma phi are expressed uh, in such a form. The difference again is here within this factor 1 plus 3 nu divided by 3 plus nu. Yes, 1 and here is such a factor. And you, so change in the radius as described like that. Of course, everything can be easily drawn uh, on a figure. Uh, if you put a particular R, you have the distribution quite easily observed uh, within the entire object. Uh, in the center, so where R equals to zero, sigma R and sigma phi are equal. So this is zero and this is zero. So both stresses are equal and they are equal to three plus nu over eight rho omega squared b squared. Let's denote it as P. And if we draw it, we'll observe that the stress distribution is such in such a disk, full solid disk, rotating, will look like this. This is zero, so this is the axis of rotation, and this is the external surface. And we observe that both stresses start at the same location. And uh, they fall but the full of radial stress it is much faster than that of uh, the, the uh, tangential stress. So the radial stress gets to zero. So at the external surface there is no radial stress, but the uh, uh, circumferential stress is always above zero, so it reaches never zero. So well, it's always above. Uh, what we see that the maximum stress is in the center of the rotating disk. Uh, if we look now at the second part, so the stress due to thermal uh, effects, so now Omega is zero, so we have motionless disk, but there is a temperature difference. So uh, the sigma r and sigma phi are expressed in such a way as we shown it before. Uh, again, the difference between them is here minus here we have plus, and additional there is a minus t. And you so change in diameter or change in uh, radius uh, as of in similar uh, form. And we can draw it if the temperature in such a disk was linear, 
So if it would look like this, T would be TB times R over B. So at external surface, we have temperature TB and it varies along the radius in such a way, the distribution of stress would be like this. Uh, they uh, both start at the same location and sigma r goes linearly to zero while sigma phi uh, goes linearly to the value opposite uh, uh, so they have it has the same values on both sides. One is positive, the other is negative. So in the middle, it crosses through zero. Uh, if the temperature distribution uh, is parabolic, uh, the lines are also parabolic. And they again start with the, at the same location, so at the same point. Uh, but uh, sigma r again reaches zero, zero at the end, but sigma phi uh, crosses through zero and ends up on the opposite sign. So if there is a, uh, let's say, positive stress, tensile stress on the other side, uh, at the, close to the external surface, there is the negative sign, so a compressive stress. Uh, we can also see that at the external surface, the stress is bigger, significantly about twice as big as on the uh, on the internal uh, on the internal surface. Of course, this is the case because if you look, you have a full, full solid shaft. If it is in a constant temperature condition. Uh, so you let's say you apply a temperature at the external surface. Uh, after a while, so the in steady state conditions, the temperature will be equal everywhere uh, because you have no no location with the second boundary condition. So with the second temperature, for example. Uh, so the these temperature distributions are usually observed in the transient state. So not steady state but in a given snapshot at a given uh, 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 instant of time, the, the, the stress distribution could be, uh, could be like this, okay? If this is linear, uh, it depends. Uh, it affects linear stresses. If it's parabolic, it affects parabolically uh, the, uh, the stresses. And last case, to be discussed is the annular disk of constant thickness. So now, we have a hole inside of the radius A. Uh, again, this is uh, the, the uh, thickness is constant, so it's equal to H. And the only difference, so the equation, the general equation, and so on, it's still the same. Uh, the difference is now uh, in the boundary conditions uh, for particular solutions of uh, given or assumed um, geometry of the of the disk. So, for sigma r equal to zero. So once more, if you know what we are talking about, this solution here is exactly the same. So here we have a solution for R, and then we introduce it, put it into the into the general solution. Okay, so this is the general case, and now we have the boundary conditions different. So sigma R is zero at internal radius, which leads us to a solution that constant C1 would be uh, not C1, it should be D1 because we reverse this values into D uh, for uh, for stresses. C was for displacement, D is for stresses. So the component D1, so the uh, integration constant D1 
if of such a form where it depends on the rotations yeah we are discussing only the rotations now the revolutions and uh, also at the external surface at uh, the internal the radial stress is zero and it results in d constant of integration in a very similar form the only difference is here oh no not only there is also plus minus here okay slightly different okay but in general more or less the, the shape is uh, quite similar so if you combine it together so this uh expression for stress and you put the the constants of integration you can uh represent stresses in such a form sigma r and sigma phi r p where p is this factor here is it is uh, everywhere the same. Three plus nu over eight rho omega squared b squared. So this is the pi to shortage the, uh, the the formula. And in the brackets we have one plus a over b. So internal radius over external radius minus radius where we calculate our stress divided by external radius is squared and minus internal radius over the radius where we calculate stresses squared. And similar thing as for the phi stresses. Uh, again, a difference is here. This factor is different. And here is plus against uh, F minus. And for U, so change in uh, radius, it's P over E, but be careful, P is not pressure, it's shown here, what is P? P over E, and there is a combination of radii, and there are some information on the Poisson's ratio. So, if we look at the distributions again, we can say, if we subtract sigma phi minus sigma uh, r, they are very much the same. The difference is here and with the sign. You can say that this difference is always positive, which means that sigma phi is always bigger than sigma r. The inner edge, so at the inner surface of the disk, so for R equal to A, we have maximum uh, stress, maximum phi, and this is 2P, 1 minus nu, divided by 3 plus nu, uh, A over B squared, plus 1. So to do any computations, any uh, safety uh, calculations, uh, uh, we can determine that the equivalent stress for such a ball, for such a, a rotating disk uh, is equal to phi max because uh, our stress is zero there. So this is the only stress which occurs there. So we have to keep the Sigma phi maximum divided by a low, uh, below the allowable limit. So this is the only stress which is the observed. And if we draw it, you will get such a distribution. This is again the internal radius, external radius, and very similar uh, distribution of uh, radial stress it reaches its maximum, starts at zero, ends at zero, and its maximum is about one third of the uh, total distance between the internal and external uh, surface. And uh, sigma phi is always above sigma r, and its highest value is on the beginning. And it never reaches zero, so there is a non 
zero value even at the end at the external surface and the maximum stress which has to be kept below the allowable limit is here just in the uh, uh, at the internal radius and the last factor is the temperature distribution so uh, similar formulas as uh, before but for uh, now for stresses being the result of temperature distribution uh, across the as a function of a radius and of course the change in so this deforma deformation or in other words displacement in radial direction and again if you draw it uh, the distribution of course will depend on the temperature distribution what is the temperature distribution now it is quite um, it can be of course det determined at different uh, time intervals and if we have temperature uh, linear distribution of temperature it is it looks like that uh, very similar as previously again the radial stress starts at zero ends at zero and the phi stress uh, has quite big value at the internal surface and lowers down crosses zero and uh, gains opposite sign, so a reversed kind of stresses. So if one side is compressive, the other is tensile stress. Uh, of course, depend on the direction again uh, of the of the stress. But uh, the higher stress uh, are at the inner surface. If the distribution was parabolic, the it. It is quite similar. Uh, the distribution they are less. Uh, 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 the 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 um, they are mo slightly more curved, but the uh, the uh, distributions are quite uh, quite similar, as you observe here. Uh, both of the values and the distributions are they are slightly different, of course. Uh, not much, uh, but uh, the, the, the stress distribution is quite similar. So again, if you were to look for maximum stress, depends now uh, uh, what you can observe here that at the external surface, oh, it's cut too quickly. Uh, at external surface, you obtain higher stress that's uh, for the um, parabolic distribution of temperature that in the linear case. So it is slightly above one unit. So let's say one and a half unit. And this is uh, more than two, even uh, more than two. So that there is a increase in uh, temperature difference, uh, increase in stress at the external surface. At the internal surface, it is very much the same. Two, two and a piece and here two also two and a piece, so slightly less here than here. This is for the same, uh, let's say, mature properties and the same uh, TB calculated. Uh, uh, but the, the distribution is here more curved, so higher stresses are at the ends. And this is what I uh, wanted to show you. Uh, and I think this is enough uh, for general theory of thermal stresses. Of course, we could uh, discuss more things, but as you see, it, they are quite complex uh, as far as the uh, mathematical description is concerned. And we usually in practice now uh, do uh, more with use of uh, numerical software. And that software I will show you next time. Uh, I'll try to solve some uh, some of the problems we have discussed uh, so far. We have discussed and solved analytically, and we could we will be able to compare the results. Uh, of course, they should be the same uh, for simple geometries. Uh, they are the same, but uh, if the geometry is uh, more complex, uh, the analytical solution is not more available. Uh, the equations. Uh, become uh, so complex that they are they are very difficult to be solved, and the only uh, the correct way is the 
is to use the numerical software. But of course, the knowledge, the basic knowledge on the thermal stresses, what's behind, uh, what are the, uh, on what parameters they, uh, um, they depend. This is quite important knowledge uh, uh, because you can generally assess uh, whether there is a threat of thermal stresses in given situations or not. Uh, whether you have to uh, take into account the thermal stresses or you can uh, forget about this or how you should act to uh, reduce the thermal stresses because the software will not tell you that. You can only calculate a given situation uh, uh, less or more complex, but you have to have knowledge uh, on what factors uh, the stress uh, will depend on what factors the stress depends and how to prevent uh, excess uh, excessive stresses in this uh, in this uh, in different objects. So uh, if you have any questions, please uh, if not, we we'll see us uh, next time and uh, and we'll discuss the problems uh, from the, let's say, solution uh, tool point of view, so the, the, the software uh, where we can, uh, let's say, not very complex because uh, the building a complex geometry takes time, but for simple geometries, uh, we can solve uh, some uh, problems and observe uh, how it works first, uh, and whether the results are comparable or the same uh, as we obtained from the uh, from the uh, analytical solutions. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye. If anyone wants ask for something, so you're welcome. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.